Apostles Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen.
This week's lectionary reading from the Gospel of Luke describes such a scene. Jesus is invited for a Sabbath meal by a leader of the Pharisees. Arriving early, he sits and watches as his fellow guests scramble for a place for places of honor around the table. Like the elders who showed up at Debbie's grandparents' home, these guests know of the pecking order, and they relish in it. If I'm imagining the scene correctly, they jostle and shove each other, feigning dignity while still fighting for, for prestigious spots near the host. After observing their drama for a little while, Jesus calls them out with a parable. Knowing full well the social rules of his day, he shuns them and calls instead for a revolution. Not a revolution of arms and bloodshed, but a revolution in table manners. When you're invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit down from the place of honor, he exhorts his fellow guests. Go and sit down in the lowest place, so that when your host comes, he may say to you, Friend, move up higher. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. As if that isn't countercultural enough, Jesus turns to his host and continues. When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, then you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. The text this week does not tell us how Jesus' listeners responded. I don't know if they laughed, shook their heads in disbelief, questioned Jesus' sanity, argued back, or just followed his advice. All I know is how I react as I read and reread this story. I'm a I feel an uncomfortable combination of surprise, skepticism, and fear. As in, really? Was Jesus serious? Does he have any idea what he's asking? It appears he does. Every once in a while, just as I'm growing comfortable with my faith, a story like this one comes along to shatter my complacency. Don't exalt myself. Don't insist on the recognition I deserve. Ignore the pecking order or worse, upend it. Don't network, don't snooze, don't ground those. Open my heart and my home to people who can do nothing for me. People I have no affinity for. People I can't impress, earn favors from, or show off my competition. Why on earth should I be doing that? Because Jesus insists on it. Because this is who God is. The great reverser of our priorities, our hierarchies, and our values. Because there is no end to the game of who is in and who is out. And God, in God's wisdom, knows that our anxious scramble for greatness will lead to nothing more but anxiety, more suspicion, more loneliness, more hatred, more division, more devastation. Because God's kingdom is not the kingdom of scarcity. It is one of abundance, where all are already welcome, already loved, already cherished. Because the currency of that kingdom is humility, not arrogance. Generosity, not stinginess, 
hospitality, not fear. So let's face it. Humility is a tricky thing. We too easily conflate it with self-effacement, low self-esteem, and complicity in the face of oppression. Even if we manage to find it in healthy ways, humility betrays us. The very instant at which I claim to achieve humility is the moment when it eludes me. Worse, very little of our culture rewards or supports the humble. Whether we're talking entertainment, politics, sports, or even religion, we have an unhealthy admiration for the loudest, the biggest, and the bravest. Whether we recognize it or not, we are known around the world for idolizing the superlative. What would happen to our discourse if we shunned the word best? When we dare to gather at Jesus' table, we are actively protesting the culture of upward mobility and competitiveness that surrounds us. There is nothing easy or straightforward about this. It requires hard work over a long period of time. To eat and drink with God is to live in tension with petty orders that define our boardrooms, our college admissions committees, our church politics, our presidential elections, and that can be hiding. But that is what we are called to do. To humble ourselves and place our hope in a radically different kingdom. Whenever Debbie's father retells his childhood story, she tells him that Jesus applauded that ravenous little four-year-old who broke the rules and challenged the hierarchy. In fact, if we're reading Luke's story correctly, I believe Jesus would have ushered those men of God right out of the room and insisted that the little children eat first. Favor the ones who cannot repay you. Prefer the poor. Choose obscurity. Jesus asks us to believe that our behavior at the table matters. Because it does. Where we sit speaks volumes, and the people whom we choose to welcome reveals the stuff of our souls. This is God's world that we live in. Nothing here is ordinary. In this realm, the strangers at our doorsteps are things. Um, at this time, I invite our ushers forward to this morning's offering. Oh God, we give you thanks for these, our gifts, gifts that have been graciously given to us, that we now humbly return to you, so that they might be used to further your kingdom on earth, a kingdom that is radically different than we could ever begin to comprehend. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
As we come to our time of prayer this morning, we want uh, our full prayer list can be found on the back of the bulletin. We also want to remember Judy Schaefer this morning, who had pacemaker surgery at the beginning of last week and is home and is doing well. We also want to remember Lucille Thompson, who currently has COVID. Are there other joys and concerns we would like to lift up as a congregation this morning? Welcome. Walter's brother Jim had a procedure on Friday and is recovering well and is doing well. Open our eyes so that we might see the places you are already working. Open our ears to hear your voice, whether in loud thunder or in a still small whisper. Open our hearts so that we might receive your love and grace and share it with others. For God, we do all things through you, by you, in you, and through your Son's holy name. Now in Christ's name we pray the prayer of Jesus first taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespassers, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation. I 
this time, I invite Hayden's family and Hayden forward for his baptism this morning. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without Christ. Who presents this Hayden is presented before us for holy baptism. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, please say, I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? You confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church with which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. Will you nurture this child in Christ's holy church, that by your teaching and example he may be guided to accept God's grace for himself? to profess his faith openly and to lead a Christian life. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include this person now before you in your care? We will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround these persons and give them love and forgiveness. That they may grow in the service of others. We will pray for them that they may be true to the Messiah and walk in the way that they be taught. Let us join together in professing the Christian faith as contained in the scriptures of the Old and New Testaments. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, Lord, Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Before we begin this portion of the service, um, I want to prepare the water for us. Um, back in 2008, a group of St. Bethlehem folks, the six of us, gathered together and took a trip to a faraway place. We went to the Holy Land and got to see so many different places there. It's been an incredible part of our journey to share that journey. But we also brought something back home with us. And that was we brought this bottle back and had filled it with water from the Jordan River that's over there in the Holy Land. And on occasion, we were able to find an appropriate time and place to kind of use that and incorporate the memory of it of a few people. But 
but it also connects all of us to Christ and to where he was baptized himself, um, the community that surrounded him with love and nurture and worthy of seeking old enough to walk and talk. We had a mom and a, and a dad, and we had care that was given to him just as it's happening again today. Not just physical care, not just emotional care, but the spirit is being cared for today. So it's not like it's going to be in the it's just water from another way, another way, another place. I don't even know if they let you have that water anymore. It's so dry. They probably get upset if you bring some of their home with you. But we had that. I don't believe this is for And I also want to be sure you know anybody that puts a water there like that. But I think the label of it, because it's just about gone anyway this morning, and the label on it has some heat in it. Our presence, 
our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. The God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace. I invite you all now to stand as you are able as we sing together, Child of Blessing, Child of Promise, and I will walk our newest member around so that we can all welcome him in Christian love. Please stand as you are able. Thank you. 